Hey investors, welcome to your portfolio update for Tuesday, July 30th, almost to the end of the month again. And just like we've been talking about for the past uh, couple years now, we come to the end of the month very near the highs, right? And so we want to talk about today, we're going to talk about the market, we're going to talk about our portfolio, and we'll talk about a couple of those plays that we're looking at. And then we have some questions from some of our newer members, and we'll make sure to answer those. So Andrew and John and Steve, we have a couple questions from them. So feel free to stick around at the end of the video if you'd like to hear the answers to that. So let's take a look at the market. Diving into things here, we have the spiders up here up the front. And in yesterday's letter, we talked about we were looking for a pullback, or we were at least going to anticipate a pullback. Now, remember how many times we've done this. We've been in good position. We've had uh, almost a completely long portfolio, and we've waited for pullbacks. Remember in here, we were waiting for a pullback. Really didn't get one. In here, we said, oh, let's hold off for a minute and see if we get a pullback. Didn't get one. Now, up here at the end of the month, we're sitting at the highs again. So the play is to keep the stocks that we have, but anticipate a pullback to add more stocks to our portfolio. We don't want to add now just in case we get a pullback. We have some newer plays and, and we don't want to get into something and see it drop a few percent if we can avoid that, really. I mean, that's make you feel a lot better. So we're going to hold off on any new plays except for this yum. We're still looking at yum. And we're going to wait until we either make new highs, we've got some kind of a lot of news coming out this week, or pull back. If we pull back, that gives us a great opportunity to look at our symbols and see which ones are not pulling back, and we can reduce our risk pretty, pretty heavily on those plays. Now taking a look at our overall portfolio, here is the spreadsheet where we're at. We got rid of PRGO. We sold at uh, 131 and 133, as you can see here. Both of our targets were hit. Our only short, AAP, we're still in it. We've got a little bit of money. We can't seem to really either make or lose money on this stock, so uh, I don't think it's a bad thing considering we're short and our stock is kind of holding in there, not rallying like the rest of them. Um, we did take a small loss on LO. We were able to reduce our risk down to just 1%, and it did hit that stop last week, so we are out of LO. And LF hit both of the targets. Very nice on that one, so hopefully you had a chance to play along. Now on our spreadsheet here, for the new members, the yellow is are any symbols that we have recently reduced our risk. And I update that on every Monday. So when you get the letter, you'll see this spreadsheet and you'll see some yellow. Most of the time we're, we reduce the risk on something. And that's, that's the case for these two names here. PBNY hit its first target. And I just like to point that out when we get there so you guys know if you're playing along. And PBNY, uh, hit the $11 target, so it's green. Just let you know, hey, we recently hit that. Now, next Monday, this will go away. There won't be any green there, because it we've already talked about it, right? And so, this is the overall portfolio. Keep an eye on this. We post it on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And here's where we're at as of the close today, Tuesday, July 30th. Now, let's go through and look at each stock and just kind of see where we're at. On our watch list here, you can see PBNY. We already hit our first target, and so that goes into this category. We have not hit any targets on these symbols right here. Okay, So PBNY is looking really good. Um, we had a great explosive move ever since we bought it. And if you look at our spreadsheet, we hit the $11 target, and now we're just looking for $11.75. So we go back to our chart and see right here, we hit $11 oh, to the, oh, by a penny. And now we're going to wait for $11.75. In my opinion, we're going to either hold up here like the market, or like over here, where it just kind of did nothing for five or six days, or we're going to pull back and have to wait a little bit longer for that 11.75 target. Now, the good news is when you look at it, if we're only risking three percent, right? So we made almost we made over eight percent on we made nine percent on our on most of our position, okay? And now we're going to risk three percent at the moment to shoot for 11.75. So either way we look at it, we're going to make money on this one. So it's worth the 3% risk at the moment. Now 9.70 is our stop and it's all the way down here. PBNY is not set to release any earnings. There's no news that I know of that's uh, potentially going to get in the way or be negative for the stock. So we're just going to sit back and wait. Now that's a long, potentially a long time to wait and that's why we do our portfolio sizing like this. We're really trying to hit the first target, 
three quarters of our position is for target number one. The remaining quarter is kind of for fun. We want to see how much further we can take it. And there's a reason why we do this. That when you have only one quarter of your position, you are not as nervous, right? I can, you know, not even think about this stock, set a couple alerts and come back to it if an alert goes off. So you're not emotional about it, but you can leave that last quarter and it teaches you what happens. So you're always going to look at the stock and you, and you never know. Maybe it bounces up a little bit more than we would have thought and gets up to 1150 and then pulls back and then blasts up through 1175. That last quarter helps you learn how to shoot for targets. So it's an unemotional way to say, would we have gotten here? Would we have gotten here? And learn while there's real money on the line, right? Make sense? So that's kind of where we're at with PBNY. And anytime we leave that last quarter, we're just learning how much further can we get from one of these plays. In this case, it's just a standard breakout is what we played, okay? So good job on PBNY. Let's keep moving forward. AAP is our only short position. We want this one to go down, and really, it hasn't done a whole lot since we shorted it or since we entered the stock. Um, again, not too bad considering the spiders or the S&P. Oops, the S&P has um, been rallying, right? So we have a, we obviously have a weak stock. We just haven't got our move yet on that one. So AAP, we're going to keep hanging on to it. Have not had the opportunity to reduce the risk. Hopefully we can get that soon. FULT, right? Nice, great move here. And if you look at this high right here, one half of a cent away from our target. My order didn't get filled. If anybody happened to get filled, uh, let me know. But I'm still in. Still have my order set at 13 to get out. So close. We just have to wait it out. Now on FULT, we're only risking 5%. Okay. So we've got a little bit of money in it at the moment. We're so close to 13, but these are our two targets. We would like to get out of most of it, or three quarters of it, at $13, and then to learn and see what else we can get, 13.45 is our next target. Moving down the list, TUMI started off great, not looking too good now. I like that today finished in a tail, right? It's not good to, I mean, you never like to be down on a position, but I like when we finish with a tail because historically, look what happens when you finish with a tail. If we can get just one more pop up to these highs, in my opinion, we'll be able to reduce our risk enough to where it'll be okay. We won't have to kind of worry about it too much. You can see at the moment, we've had no opportunity to reduce our risk. Our full risk on this was 8%. And so hopefully we can get one more pop on that up to these highs. By then, we'll be able to reduce our risk, hopefully. RCII, not too bad. This one's a bit of a slow mover, uh, meaning it's not like PBNY or some of the other ones where when you play it and you get in, it just blasts off. This one has a lot of back and forth days. You're up a few days, you're down a few days. You're up a few days, down a few days. Um, not much to say about this one. Just keep playing it. There's not, no news or anything for me to think we should be uh, doing anything different. CYBX, you talk about slow. This one is, hasn't done a whole lot. Um, but it's holding up at the highs. So the market holding at the highs at the moment and CYBX holding at the highs. Always good news when a stock stays up near the highs and there's not a lot of sellers. See how low the volume is? Lots of volume over here, no volume over here. I'm not worried about it. Foot Locker, um, a little bit weird here. I don't normally play retail names. Good stock, good growing company. Uh, they're doing a lot of different things with their stores. You can go back and look at uh, prior videos and see. Um, Foot Locker's doing okay. Got a good bounce off the 50-day, not a lot of volume there. That's a little concerning, um, but there's nothing new really to report on Foot Locker. AVGO is kind of our problem child at the moment. We are hovering just above our stop price right in here. Um, it's holding at the moment. Oops. It's holding, and just like we talked about the market the day after the holiday, uh, 4th of July, if we can get back above the 50-day again, that'll be a sign of all clear and we'll get more investors to uh, buy this. I mean, more than likely, we'll see a nice pop on it. But really, nothing more to, to report than that. PAG has done nothing but go up since the day we bought it. Uh, this is our newest play. Right? So our newest play is always down here at the bottom. We've had some good, uh, well, actually, the past three or four days have been really nice as far as being good strong days and having a lot of participation. This is the volume down here. And we have a lot of people buying the stock. Always a good thing. So we're looking good on PAG. If you're playing along, we're very close right here, 3680 to hitting our first target. 
We got to 36 and change today. Yeah, one more good day like this, and we should get to 3680. No problem. So that's our portfolio. Um, let's take a look at this yum. This is a potential new play for us. And yum, we're just waiting for it to get up into those highs. Um, had a good day. This is when I did the last video, talked to you guys about, you know, hey, looks good. We've got a lot of participation here. Maybe we're going to hit our target. Go back on our spreadsheet, or oh, I'm sorry, on the members page here. Scroll down. Yum, we've been looking at for a while here. There you go. And you'll see a chart. And this chart, oh, let me get it over here for you. Um, shows exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to play this weekly breakout and we want to play it at 74.75. Now if we hit that number and you can put your order in ahead of time then our stop is going to be 68.77 and in this case we're going to risk 8%. That means from the time we hit 74.75 we can drop 8% before we will admit we're wrong. Now we're also going to shoot for 81 and 83. This is target 1 which again is hitting our three quarters, getting out of three quarters of our position right here, okay? And then 83.50 will be our second target. And that's gonna be the last quarter of our position that we're gonna hold just to see how far we can get and learn kind of how the stock's moving. So yum, I really think is gonna uh, trigger here soon. And uh, let me get back to this for you. I think it's gonna trigger soon, so if you wanna play along, be sure to have your order in and ready to go. On the charts, you can see it. Here's a more spread out version of our weekly chart. And so that's where we're at on Yum. All right. Now, until the market pulls back, I don't really want to have a bunch of plays to look at. Um, let me go back to the S&P. When we look here on the daily, remember when, this, when the market fell quickly, we started putting a lot of these plays up for potential entry. And now that we're back up here, we want to hold off. Right? We want to wait for we, either we get a pullback or take off to new highs before we get carried away again. All right. So hopefully that answers uh, some of the questions I think I covered in the video. However, we do have some new members and I do want to uh, answer the questions in the, in the video for you. And of course, if you have any questions or at any point you think I should cover something a little bit more, just send an email, Dustin at tradingwings.com. And what I'd usually do is just send you an email back saying, hey, check out this video I did. Uh, answer those questions for you. All right. So for those that want to stick around for the questions, the first one is risk. How much do we risk on each play? Now we talked a little bit about, let me go back to our screen here. We talked a little bit about the, there it is, what we will risk on the play. Let me get this over for you so you can see. All right. And we talked about having an 8% risk, but how many shares do we buy? How do you know, you know, 100 shares, 500, 10,000, <laughs> what do you buy? And the answer to that is I personally risk 5% of my entire account on one position, okay? So when you look at our spreadsheet, each play that you see has 5% of the account. Now when we hit our first target, I'm going to take three quarters of that off, have that little chunk left over, all right? Now you can do more, you can do less, um, between 2 and 5% seems to be the norm. The advice that I'll give you, and this question was for Andrew by the way, the advice that I'll give you is take a look at our portfolio of how many stocks we have, right, and ask yourself, are you comfortable holding that many positions? And maybe this is a little to you, maybe this is a lot of stocks, I don't know. But if you find that you're going to be more active, then it's okay to have that 2 to 5% in there. and go for it. You know, you're going to be active. You might play 10, 15, 20 plays at a time. And with 5% risk, obviously you can play 20 positions, right? 5% 20 times is 100% of your account. Now, your call whether you want to include margin or not, I, I don't want to answer that for you, but 5% um, is where we're at with that. Most of the people that I talk to, most of the members are also at 5%. Now, if you look at this and say, Jesus, man, this is way too many stocks. I, I, I can't manage that. I'd like to just play one or two with you until I get to learn a little bit. You could probably risk a little bit more. Also, if you're going to just play a few of these stocks and be in Rick's room and try to day trade at the same time, you might do that 5 to 10% of your account so that you have money left over to day trade with as well. So some things you need to, to take into consideration there. Really, you know where I'm at, at the 5%. That's the way I like doing it. I'm very comfortable with that. Um, but it just depends. If you're on day trade, maybe a little more. If you're going to have a few less positions, then you can have a little bit more as well. If you want to have more positions than me, then you may want to be closer to that 2 
of the account value um, per play. All right, so that was question number one. The second question from Andrew was uh, entries. How do we pick our entries? Well, it's a good question, and at the moment, the answer is really simple. Most of these plays right in here are all uh, breakout plays. The market, if you look at a weekly chart, chart of the market, has basically been straight up since you, know, you can see right here. And then if you even zoom out even further, you can see how long the market's been up. So we've been playing breakouts and finding a lot of success with that. So if you look at a lot of these symbols, you're going to see a lot of breakouts. The catch is you got to find it on the weekly chart. Okay, there's PAG, AVGO, got to zoom out a little bit, right? Foot Locker, right? Long weekly breakouts, right? So at the moment, that's what we're looking at. It's a little bit boring, right? But it's fun when they take off like uh, PAG does. So that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. Um, I covered the target one and target two. Okay, that's this one right here. Personally, what I like to do is take three quarters of the position off at target one and leave a quarter for target two. You could do half and half. You could say I'm going to take all but 10 shares off right at that first target. You could take everything off at the first target and just play that. Really, the choice is yours. Um, personally, I, that's exactly what I'm doing. Three quarters comes off at the first target and the one quarter gets left for the second target. Okay. So hopefully that answers some of Andrew's questions. Let's go on to, oh, that covers, yeah, that almost covers all the questions. Um, let's go on to look at Steve's question here. On the daily chart, we have a few blue, uh, lines. We have a blue line and we have a red line. And Steve was asking, you just tell me what those lines are and how I get them there. It's a very common question, uh, no problem. We have right here, and I'll show you how to do it first. You right click on the chart and click on study line you can see exactly what's on the chart. I've got my 50-day moving average, which is in blue. You click on configure, you can see it's a 50 simple moving average and the color is blue. And my other moving average is a very common one. It's the 200 simple moving average and that's in red. So using the view trader charts, you can just right click on the chart and hit, con uh, sorry, study chart, study line right there. And you'll be able to put any studies that you like on the charts. Some people like the stochastics and things like that. Um, all of that can be found right under the study line. All right. So hopefully this answers some of your questions. Thanks for the questions, by the way. Feel free to send as many as you like. That's what I'm here for. Um, that reviews the market. That reviews our portfolio and our one potential play at the moment, which I think any day now we're going to be able to get in. Um, as always, you know where to send the questions. And um, stay tuned. We will uh, talk to you again on Thursday. And um, answer questions then if you like. And uh, hopefully hit this PAG target. I'd like that. And um, yeah, that's about it. So uh, have a good rest of your day, rest of your evening, and trade well.